Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Belmont in Clearwater County. And in today's episode, we want to talk a little bit about William Bell's frustrations with Belmont. He has invested a lot of money in this community, and yet he has yet to see the return he's expected to, to receive. He thought that this would be a community where he could really sell a number of residential lots and to this point he's done okay he's developed this little area right here but he really wanted to be able to develop this area and he thought that this was going to be something that was fairly easy unfortunately the great belmont fire has scared a number of people away there's great concern that there just simply aren't enough ways to get in and out of the community and fear that this rail line could cut the community off from being able to leave at any point in time. And that makes sense. There are multiple crossings, and if there were another fire, there's a chance that there could be a train blocking a road and people would be stuck here. So today, we are gonna remedy some of those issues, and Mr. Belmont is gonna work with the county to create some additional ways in and out of the city. Uh, but the county has some issues with that. It's not free to create roads. And to, to be able to recoup some of the money, they want to do a couple of things. First, they've asked Mr. Belmont for a donation. They've asked for this land right here to create a park. This park will be able to generate some revenue. In addition to that, they are going to be developing some land in this pristine forest. This, uh, the sale of these lots will go to pay for some of these roads because we can't just rely on dirt roads to get people in and out of this community outside of the main highway. So that's what we're gonna focus on and we're gonna make a couple of improvements to Ashland as well as we go through and, and improve the city. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is fix the rail network. So there were some things pointed out in the previous episode about the rail network that Mr. Bell agrees to, uh, or agrees with. There are two crossings right here of this main road, and that is particularly troubling if you get dual trains coming across here. So we have a crossing here, crossing here, and we could really simplify and clean this all up. So this is an investment that Mr. Bell is willing to make. In fact, it's a pretty significant mulligan. We are going to be eliminating these rail crossings, simplifying things quite a bit. So what we're gonna do Take a look at what we'll turn on our terrain view. What we're gonna do is loop this back around. There we go. And I have prop anarchy on, which is unfortunate. <laughs> it's it's at the start of the build. Of course I'll have it on. There we go. So now we've gotten rid of the trees in there, which is a big help. So we have one way to get in here, but we need one more. And we wanna make sure that our trains can cross on either side. So we're gonna pull this up and make a, a nice clean connection back here. And for everyone who left a comment in the Discord about this and in the, in the YouTube comments, I appreciate you. This was a, a pretty significant oversight on my behalf that this is a much easier connection, much safer connection, fewer road crossings. And that's really where you're gonna see the issues. So I am very pleased with this uh, improvement. That's just one thing. And that's not enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to plan another route into Belmont. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take this road here and make another connection. And we're going to connect that up way over here in Ashland. Before we get to that, I want to make an improvement here. So we added this and in the, in the, the previous episode, I mentioned that I forgot to add in water. I'm not going to worry about it right now. We're going to fix this up. Uh, so I received a suggestion to add a really fantastic asset, and we're going to do that right now. So we have this grain elevator, and it is really, really spectacular. I'm going to move this closer to the road than maybe you'd expect me to, and there's a very specific reason for that. Uh, so when I'm spawning these long trains that we have, you can end up with issues where basically because the trains are so long they start spawning in the middle of nowhere so we certainly don't want that to occur
Okay, so we've, now we've got this here. This is looking okay, but we've got some things that we can clean up a little bit. So I know that we, there's some sort of deletion occurring here. And all I've got to do is go through here and clean that up a little bit and make it look nicer. I also want to tighten up these tracks a bit, bring them a little bit closer. Okay, and now I'm going to really tighten this brush up, just fill in these gaps. Get this to look as nice as we can. So we're going to zoom out and it'll look okay. <laughs> if we zoom in too close, it's uh, it's going to be a bit problematic. I also want to throw some concrete in front of this. Yeah, that looks a lot better. We'll probably want to take a look at our building spawn points for this as well. They're a little messy. Uh, so what we're going to do is just take a look at these. You can see that we've got a number of spawn points, or a number of vehicles spawning in a pretty messy location. We'll just bring that up here. That should be much better. And then I want to bring water and power over to this facility. There we go. Now we should have our power connection. We got it. We're, we're, we're doing good. I'm going to add a bit of a fence here, just for a little bit of detailing, just to add a little bit to the build. And then I wanted to manually add some trees back here, just to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to go about it kind of randomly, I'm not going to make it 100% perfect, but I do want it to be better than it was. There we go, and I think this looks and feels significantly better than what we had before. This is good here, but that's not the primary reason that we're over here. The primary reason that we're over here is to address our connection over to Belmont. So a couple of things that I noticed. So first of all, we have a kind of a mismatch of roads here. So I want to fix that up a little bit. So we've got this rural highway and I like that road. I think we're going to extend this over, but I do want to make sure that we're Bringing that all the way through. We are going to potentially interrupt this power line right here. I'm going to leave Anarchy on because of that. And I'm going to click on E. One of the weird things about this particular toggle it mod is sometimes the toggles stop working. But if I can keep those on, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. What I want to do is follow a contour line. So I'm going to choose this contour line right here. And then I'm just going to keep it to the ground. And you can see exactly what I meant about this being wrong or interrupted. We can fix that easy enough. Okay, so now I want to get this all the way over to Belmont. And where I want to get it is approximately right here. <laughs> so that's quite a hike. We've got some work to do. So there's our contour. So if we follow that... We are a couple lines south or north of there. Not a problem. We just need to be aware of that. And then we want to cross this water body basically as low as we or as, as straight as we can to make as short a bridge span as as possible. And then we're gonna bring this back across. Now we are at the same contour. So now it's just following the contour to make this connection. So I believe that this road is going to handle a ton of traffic. And as soon as we make this connection, I think it's going to happen. Okay, so now I want to go through here. I need to make some adjustments here. So we have a we have a traffic signal there. We don't want that anymore. We're going to have some stop signs. We'll get rid of our control there. Then I want to look at our line tool. We're just going to eliminate all of these. And all I really want are lines around the edge. And now we should really go through and take a look at our slopes. This is a fairly high speed road. There's an 11.5% grade there. We're going to take that down. Now we're looking good. 
Now I'm gonna throw this back on to see if there are any locations where it looks a little steep. Four, it's not terrible, but we can we can improve that. We can do better. Right here is another spot where maybe it's a little bit precarious. Not too bad. Now I think we're in a pretty good spot. So I do wanna go through, and we're going to continue to make improvements here. And we're gonna to wanna to prioritize this movement. So even though this road was built not all that long ago, it's a dirt road, so we can uh, take some liberties. So the, the, the question I, I would have would be, how exactly does this road connection get made? Well, first we know this is gonna be the connection and we need, to, need, we need to get through here somehow. So what I would guess is that this gets purchased here. We take a quick break from this, have this head straight through, and then we find a way to meet up with our other road. We're gonna use our angles and road guidelines to make this possible. There we go. That is a much better connection. The problem is we are now into our landfill here and obviously we're not gonna be able to move the landfill or we shouldn't anyway so I'm gonna just relocate that road we'll say that it was constructed around the landfill so this is gonna open up some opportunities for the county if they want to develop along here they could certainly add some developable lots and they very well might do that but I do want to see you see this are it's already carrying traffic which is exactly what William Belmont wanted so he is very excited about this because this opens up some possibilities for his land. And this is a higher capacity road, which is also good for him. So now there are two ways to get in and out of this community that are logical. I think we're also gonna upgrade this connection in and make this a full county road. So this is a significantly better connection in here. It has, uh, it's a striped road. It's got a, it's got a, a side pull off. It is a much more appropriate roadway for a community that is growing like Belmont. So this will help people feel a lot more safe here. Uh, feel like it's a, an appropriate road for a city of this size. So there is this dirt road here. There's not really a purpose for that. So I think this will be decommissioned along with this project. And we are gonna tighten this up as well. Just a nice connection at a 90. There we go. This kind of broke a bit, so we are going to... We'll attempt to fix that, I think that's better. Very good, very, very good. But it can always be better. And I will let, I will, I will try to stop myself. Certainly letting perfect be the enemy of good should not do that. And removing a node there is probably one of the more beneficial things that we can do for my sanity. <laughs> I mean, really, that's that's about all it is. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I'm probably just making this worse. Uh, that's kind of my uh, kind of the, the, the realm that I live in. Whenever I make these changes, I just keep making it worse until I give up. <laughs> so this is the time where I give up. So let's take a look at what's happening over here. Look at that. We're doing good. From a traffic flow standpoint, 72%. That's horrible. <laughs> but that's that's also where we are living. So I know that there are, are many concerns about this roundabout and what I've done to it. We're not going to address those today. <laughs> um, we are just going to uh, live with it for the time being. Uh, uh, honestly, that happens a lot. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to think about where we get into this park. So this park means a lot to the county because this is how the county recoups some of its money. But while I'm thinking about it, I'm actually gonna take a break, just a quick beat, because it was mentioned that the way to fix this bridge was to remove a node. You know what? You guys are right, like usual. <laughs> and I really appreciate the help that you guys provide. We fix that bridge before I forget about it. Uh, back to the park. Uh, so what I'm thinking, is we're gonna have a park entrance right here, maybe a minor ent entrance, and then a major entrance back here. And it's gonna be a pretty no frills park, but it's going to be an important part 
park nonetheless. So we're going to extend this road just, just, a, just a scotch. And then I picked up this great asset. It's a forestry path. And we're going to use this a number of times today. So all I want to do is create an extension of this road. Bring it up a couple of tiles and make a loop. And then we're going to level all of this with that main road. And I think this is a really sharp looking road. We're going to fill this up with trees and we're going to level this off a little bit so we can get a park side gate in here eventually. So I bring that road up because we're going to use it again. So this road is, is basically a modded version of the two lane gravel road. So we're going to upgrade this to a gravel road. And the main reason I'm doing that is we're going to have more carrying capacity. And I've had this issue pop up before when I upgrade this road, what I'm going to do is Upgrade, save, reload back in, and hopefully that resolves my issue. Okay, and we are back in business. I figured out what the problem was, and it was this uh, grass rural road uh, asset that we used pretty extensively throughout the community, unfortunately. I had to replace it all and eliminate the asset from the build. That is uh, one of the risks of heavily modding a city. Um, so there were a, f a few places where I had to replace that. Here is one of them. So I used the new asset that I found that the, uh, it's the rural, the rural forest path. And it's, it's a beautiful asset. It really fits in well. It has trees lining it. So it really helps to enhance the way this looks anyway. So I, I, I like the improvement. We're going to use this throughout the build and I think it's going to be a nice, uh, a nice improvement in the area. So back to our park. So we've, we built our side gate right here and we're going to build a main gate up here. So again, I want to use this rural park and or this this forest path, and we're going to come up what, five tiles and pull that back in here. You can see the trees just make it feel really good. It feels really good. So what we're going to do now is place our main forestry, uh, our main nature reserve entrance up here. So we have our, our large gate, and I think we're going to go for the large and that unlocks a variety of buildings. But right now, my main concern is centering this. So in Verde Beach, I was not able to center this and it drove me crazy, but I have move it. So I can center it and I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so we've got that going for us. They're calling it the uh, the Cooper Na uh, National Park. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna stick with that. In fact, I want you to help me name this park. So in the comments, Please leave your very best name. Uh, I'm going to pick either uh, one that jumps out to me or actually, no, I'm going to pick the one that has the most likes. So please leave a name down in the comments and I will pick the one that receives the most likes so long as it's not obscene. <laughs> this is a family friendly channel after all. So we're going to keep it. We're going to keep it PG 13. <laughs> And I say that because I, I recently watched a movie with my wife that I thought wasn't good for the children. PG-13, just fine, just fine. So back to this, we have our nature reserve main gate. And we're, the, the thing I love about these is we have self-leveling paths. So these nature reserve paths, we're gonna keep the ones that don't have lights. And again, we're gonna turn on E so that we can see our topographic view. And we're gonna have a pretty low key park. And what I think we're gonna do is only have angle on for the time being. And we're gonna meander our way down the hillside. We might need to switch back a couple of times here. Now we need our side gate. So we're gonna add that right now. And then we will center this using move it and add our final path connection. So we've done a lot of switch back <laughs> if that's if that's a term. So what I want to do is go through and make sure that our switchbacks make sense. So we're going to adjust the slopes here and 30% that's that's insane. We can't do that. <laughs> that's, that's extreme. So it's really a, a, along these switchbacks we're gonna need to do that.
There we go. A nice connection there. We could try to, to work more in. I think that the park is going to start out fairly calm with these, though. And what we're going to want to do now is do a little bit of grading. We're going to want to soften some of these edges just a bit. It doesn't have to be everywhere, but I do want it to be a little bit more reasonable. Okay, so I'm pretty pleased with that. I think that for the most part, it's okay. I think we do need some fences, though. Uh, at least where people could fall. So the idea will be if there are any places where there's water or where it's potentially uh, hazardous, we're going to make sure that we are, are, are cognizant of that and really thoughtful about our placement of these fences. We don't want to overdo it. And truthfully, we're going to trust people in a lot of these places. Maybe around some of these corners. I mean, but th these are people that are walking. So people have got to use some sense. We're going to trust people. We're going to trust people. <laughs> so my guess is there would be certain locations where, you know, there we're going to be proactive about it in certain places and in others. We're not going to worry about it until there's a problem, which is not a great way of looking at it. But unfortunately, that does happen often where you just you do what you can with the budget and resources that you have available to you. And in, in some cases, you got to trust people that they're going to do the right thing, that they're not going to get crazy. And that's what we're going to do here. So we do have a bit of a problem here. We have some slopes going up to this. I just want to make sure, maybe I won't use move it. I'll, I'll just use our sloping tool. Let's just see what this looks like. Yeah, that's worse than I thought. Okay, and now that we have done some to fix that, we're gonna go through and, and, and do our final bit of improvement on the road itself. Now it's it's a better connection. Do the same thing over here, and then we'll soften the edges just a bit. So we don't have this, this area that would really start to collect water. Also don't love that this is going down and then going back up. Yeah, that's that's much better. That's a nice gentle slope. And I understand this road is very steep in certain areas, so maybe I need to not get too crazy about it, but we're gonna we're gonna be a little crazy about it. So <laughs> we're uh, we're in a good spot there. We do need to get water and power out here, so that's gonna be our next our next issue to contend with. And knowing that some of these areas are never gonna be developed, we're just gonna cut through them, assuming that they're all public right-of-way in perpetuity. There we go. We've got our connection. We do need one more water connection, and we have... Oh yeah, that was an easement, so we're good there. Very good. So we've got a functional park at this point. I don't know why anyone would go there. It's just a path. I guess a runner might want to go. Uh, but beyond that, I don't know who else would want to go here. So we need to add something to make this a special place. So the things that we're going to want to add are campsites. Uh, we're going to want to add uh, just, a, just a couple of things, not a heck of a lot. There really aren't great locations for this right now. A lot of it's hiking. So we're going to need to actually create a campsite. And I think the campsites might actually be, let's get our terrain. <laughs> There's not a lot of great locations. So we might need to create some. So we are going to cut slightly into the hill. And we're going to turn our brush size to its absolute minimum, 15, and create a couple of level pads. I think that might be about all that we have here uh, without doing some really significant work to the park. So we are going to just go with a little bit right now. We'll turn our angle on so we don't totally butcher this road and I think we're going to turn anarchy on just so that we yeah we're going to still have some disruption to the road we have a little spot there for a campsite we're going to do the exact same thing here and then over here as well we'll make sure that it stays on the ground and that didn't turn out the way I was hoping so I think that what we're going to do is just have a straight shot off here and that'll be a spot for some campsites we'll need to add some woods there to to make it blend a bit better. So we'll just add a couple of places 
four tenths. Try to vary these up a little bit. We will add outhouses and things of that nature down here as well. And I do think that we would want to have some sightseeing locations. Let's see, we can actually see. Wow, yeah. So there are some great view sheds. Only we can get these in the appropriate locations. Here's one that seems pretty darn good. That's, that's nice. They'll be able to come over here and take a look out into the valley. And over here, now we at least have a place to use the restroom. I think we'll have a place to buy some, or to, to collect some firewood. Obviously, we wouldn't want people going and bringing firewood in from the outside, if at all possible. And then if we could have a small campfire location, that would be ideal as well. And I think we are going to use Move It to locate this in an area that makes sense to me. To make sure we don't have any trees that could catch fire above it. Perfect. So let's add some trees. We'll select some that are already here. Now these folks have a bit of privacy. Nice little campsite for whomever wants to come back here. That's nice. That is very nice. Now this feels very rustic, very secluded, very nice in my opinion. So that one down, three to go. So let's have this be a little bit more of a glamp site, as much as, a, as, much as you can have with tents anyway. So we're only gonna have these fancy tents. We're gonna clear a view of the water for these folks. We'll, we will maintain our grasses and then we will go ahead and make sure that we have plenty of buffering. Then we'll give them a bit fancier of a, of a place to have a fire. And if you want to spend the money to have a fancy campsite with a view of the water, here you are. Here you are. So the other thing that I think could make this really fun would be some sort of park pier. So I think we're going to add one here. So we'll go into our cities, our uh, city park pack, grab one of those, and then we'll make our road connection here as well, or our path connection rather. There we go. So now these folks, they're really getting the VIP experience. And I want to clean up these grasses because they were kind of clipping through. There we go. That feels good to me. What a fantastic campsite. I, that This is a place that I would absolutely love to go camping and, and spend some time with my family. So uh, that is that is the goal of this, this site here, and I think that we've accomplished it. I do think I'm going to steal the grass that we used over at the other campsite, because I do think it worked very well. And we'll just load this up to make it feel just... A little more rural, a little more out there. Oh, that That's great, I love this. This feels like a place that you wanna go and spend the, spend the evening. So one more campsite right here. I think we're gonna keep this one pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty bare bones. Just some basic tents and that's about it. See if there are any other assets that we could use. We could certainly add some seating. Truthfully though, I think it's probably more important that we have restrooms. <laughs> so I think that's what we're gonna add. We'll add the same thing. I didn't add any restrooms over here. That's kind of an expectation. I think we're gonna add them off the trail. You gotta walk a little ways, but at least you don't have people going back and visiting you. And we'll add some seating and a place to buy firewood over here or to Grab some firewood over here as well. Why not even a place to get some water? So through here, we could certainly add some lighting. That would be a beneficial thing. Particularly in areas where there are restrooms at the edge of a campsite. And even though this is a pretty bare bones site, I do want to make sure that it is secluded from everything else. We'll leave 
the area back here open so you still maintain those views. We will add some fencing just to ensure that no one decides to, to act like a bit of a knucklehead and, and uh, end up off <laughs> the cliff. That is certainly not something the park is ever going to be okay with. Then again, I want to grab these grasses. We're going to load up. Especially in the absence of, of many other amenities, I think that that's at least one that we could provide that would make some sense. Along with some seating. Gotta have a place to be able to eat. And why don't we just we'll make sure that we have a place for a campfire too. Going back on what I said, I, I, I think that it's it's important. We'll add this at the end. And there's a lot of trees around here. That makes me nervous. <laughs> you know, we're trying to improve the reputation of the city, not create a massive forest fire. So that is, if only I can prevent forest fires, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so there we go. And uh, there's not really a huge need to add a bunch of signs back here. Truthfully, there's, it's a one-way path. So I just want to make sure that we have trees along the path because that's one of the things that kind of seems a little sparse now that we've gone through and added these paths. So just along the side, I'm going to go through and add some. So I am very pleased with how this turned out. You can tell, you can, you know, there's a park there, but it's, it's tough to see it. And that is the point from Belmont. You shouldn't be able to tell that this park is there, but the county is going to be able to make money. There are people parked all the way around it. Let's see how we're doing. We're not making any money. <laughs> so I think one way to do, to, to fix this is advertising campaign. We'll have this a main park fine for fireworks. We don't want any of that. Um, so this should hopefully improve things. Night tours, we're going to add those as well. We're going to recycle our garbage. And hopefully this gets some people coming here. So we've had 10 visitors so far. It is uh, it's a challenge. So I'm curious. We have our bus route. Let's take a look at our route and make sure that people are actually able to, to get here. So our route doesn't get anywhere near it right now. I think we are gonna just loop this back through here, might as well. It's already a long route, what's what's a little bit longer? <laughs> so might as, might as well uh, really double down. And why don't we add one more stop downtown. So we have one at the school, one downtown, and one here. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that in Ashland, they're feeling a little bit jealous right now that there are multiple stops here because they certainly don't have that in Ashland. 16 visitors now, we're moving on up. So we, we, we would want to think a little bit about park maintenance, that's another thing. Um, the last thing you want to do is, is build a fantastic amenity like this and then completely neglect it, which unfortunately happens more often than you'd, you'd imagine. And one of the main reasons for that is it's easy to come up with capital dollars. So capital dollars being the, the dollars to build something, it's much more challenging to come up with the operating expenses. And one of the main reasons for that is you can bond or borrow money for a capital expenditure. You cannot borrow for operating, generally. There are ways around that, but you shouldn't. <laughs> you, you know, one of the ways around it, for instance, would be to have a lease agreement that could be used for borrowing. Or for, for operating once it's it's converted into a lease. That's getting really tricky with things and we're not we're not gonna talk about municipal financing uh, in, in that in that great of detail. First of all, I'm not great with it, and second of all, um, you know, I mean that's why we have finance departments and accountants and people who specialize in that, not not a planner talking about money. It, no one no one wants to hear that. <laughs> I talk about general the cost of a highway sorts of th sorts of things so so now we've got this road it's really doing it's really carrying a lot of traffic at this point which is great and we've got this park with oh shoot that needs power hmm and i'm amazed this didn't call out for power 
I would have thought that it needs it. It does. So that is part of our problem. We also need power for that light. Shucks. So we're going to need to think about this a little bit. So I guess, first of all, how badly do we need that light? The answer is probably not that bad, but we could also probably just add another light right here. And that doesn't actually require power. Shoot, that is really frustrating. So I think we are going to just need to add in some rural lines. Not ideal, but we got to get power places. And that should get us power throughout the park. Yeah, that's ugly. I don't love it, but you gotta have power. So we're going to we're gonna add those lines in there, and uh, thankfully, they're not all that visible. They're certainly there. And truthfully, we'd probably be cutting a lot of these, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the trees down underneath there. So I think there's a misconception that when you have a power line, you can't plant anything underneath it. That's not true. Uh, there's usually an approved species list that the power companies will provide and depending on the height of the lines you know you might be able to plant crab apple or something whatever underneath there or an evergreen that doesn't grow very quickly or you have to promise to maintain it which i would never recommend that's fraught with issues either way we we're okay um and i, I inadvertently made these power lines incredibly tall so i guess that helps too <laughs> <laughs> that was not at all what my goal was. Let's see if I can lower a couple of these. Now, whenever you're using Move It to, to change power lines, you got to make sure there are two circles. The small circle is just the post itself. The big circle is the line and the post. So you got to make sure that you're being really cautious with that. So... Uh, I think we're good there. We're in a good spot. So we're going to move on to the next part of the build. Now the county's able to make a little bit of money. Hopefully that turns into a lot of bit of money eventually. And again, I need a name for the park. So please leave that down in the comments. So yeah, we're making some money. I think that we might want to crank this. We'll move it to 15. It's a county park. We can, we can charge for it. So we're going to do it. The next thing I want to do is, is the county is, is very interested in recouping some of the value associated with the, this road. So what we're going to do is add just a couple of rural cul-de-sacs, which I'm really excited about. Teeing into this road and creating some developable lots. So I'm also going to change the zoning setback to, six me or to eight meters so that it feels a little bit more rural. I think we're gonna have a few places where we do this. And I'm really gonna try to restrict this to some of the more heavily wooded areas. I think those will be some of the most desirable lots anyway. So for this rural development, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so now I want to go through and use my network multi-tool to make sure that these slopes are doable. And then we're going to go through here and make some, some buildable lots. So we're going to actually do a bit of grading to make sure that our, our lots are big enough to build on. So why don't we crank this up to about 40. Actually, we're just going to use... We're just going to use our uh, our soften terrain tool and go through and soften the terrain directly adjacent to the roads. Let me make this a little bit bigger. We'll we're, we'll center ourselves on the roads to soften along it. So generally, these kinds of developments would not have city water, but we don't have the ability to add things like uh, septic systems. So, or, or wells, not in a logical way. So we're just going to go ahead and add this. Okay, so now I want to be very thoughtful about my zoning, very intentional, and make sure that we're getting plenty of space in between these homes. This is rural, so people expect separation.
I'm also gonna go through here and create a district. So this is gonna be for two reasons. Number one, I believe that this, I mean, this, so this would be a town. So at least in the US, uh, or I should say at least in the Midwest. So towns mean different things in different places. And in, in Wisconsin, there are different units of government and a town is one of those units. So a town, it, you know, I, I spoke in episode two about the grid and uh, you know how everything, basically everything west of you know the 13 colonies was divided off using top Thomas Jefferson system. Oh, and I used the park. See here, I'm gonna take that back. Um, inside of those uh, divisions, there are actually towns, uh, at least in Wisconsin, and those towns are, are, are autonomous governments. Uh, towns can be annexed, they're unincorporated, um, but the the city has to request that. So Belmont would probably be a village, uh, which is, you know, so there's towns, there's villages, there are cities, counties, states, um, and then the, the country as, as, the, as the division. So we're gonna name this the town, and I think we're gonna give a a nod to Jackson Anderson Brown and name this the, the the town of Brown and it's not uncommon and here's where it gets confusing so you could end up in situations where a city and a town have the same name so uh, a good example of this near me there is the town of Madison and the city of Madison now the town of Madison is going away and if you didn't understand that those were different units of government, that could be alarming. <laughs> the town of Madison's going away, what? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a totally different thing. But it's not at the same time. And the interesting thing in that case I just, I just named is that the city of Madison is not absorbing all of the town, just part of it. So again, we're being thoughtful about our placement of homes here. We don't want to overdo it. We just want to, to provide a range of options in this area. It's interesting to me that this is developing so slowly. It looks like things are starting to pick up. So I'm gonna let this develop out for just a moment. Actually, before we do that, why don't we set some policies for the town of Brown our themes rather. So we'll enable the theme manager here. And I think that what we're gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna close the unified UI. We are going to add DK post-war here and post-war housing. And that should give us a little bit of variation. I think we're also going to have our big suburbs. And why don't we even add in 70s and 90s? So be very different than some of our other districts. We do have power, so I'm not sure why it's having heartburn with this. But we will try to remedy that. Seems happier now. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're gonna let this simulate for just a moment. And I'm not seeing anything pop up here, which makes me curious whether this is a demand problem or a problem with my with the size of uh, the size of my zones and it's, it doesn't seem to be that because we do have it is filling in in these different zoning sizes it's just a little bit slow it's just a really remote location though so that's something to keep in mind um, one thing that could maybe help juice this a bit would be adding just a couple of so maybe a couple of, of, of different uh, you know, sort, sort of auto-oriented uses out here. My concern is, well, it, there's a couple. City services out here because of the policies that we've set. So I don't know that there are any, there's any coverage out here and that could be part of the issue. We should certainly have a fire watchtower out here. And maybe that'll help a little bit, but it just might this might just be a little slow going out here. I am thinking though, it would be nice to have a little auto-oriented commercial district out here. Now that we have this really great view 
I would imagine that there would be a, a great deal of demand for some auto-oriented commercial type uses. So we'll add a very small district out here. And I don't love these uses. I don't know who does, uh, but they are certainly the types of uses that would see this land and go, wow, what a great, what a great location for us. So I think I removed a building out of that set at one point. So I might need to go back through there and fix that and get that re re-added. We're gonna get rid of our other zones there and we will zone these in. I just wanna be really sure that I know where this ends. It's right about there. And truthfully, we should have a transformer out here. Yeah, that is much bigger than I was thinking, so maybe we'll just have a quick earthquake sensor. Just add that, and yeah, it's it's Dunkin' Donuts, it's those sorts of uses. I would expect that they would, yeah, Dunkin' Donuts next to a Tim Hortons, next to a Tim Hortons. Let's be a little bit more thoughtful about that, we're not going to allow that. <laughs> so we're going to call a mulligan on what just popped up. We'll speed this up for just a moment. One of the things I would expect to see here are flags. I feel like that's something that is quite common. And the vanilla game actually comes with some really great flag options. And I feel like sometimes you see these off the highway. Another place that this would make a ton of sense, if we go back to, well, out here we can add another one. I feel like especially at truck stops you see them for whatever reason, and then you also see them at post offices. It's a government facility, so it's not surprising that you would see a flag there. Same thing at elementary schools and high schools. You would expect to see them there as well. It's too bad that we don't have a clear uh, a Clearwater County one because you would expect to see city flags or, or state flags, things of that nature. We've already got one here, so we're fine there. We have our elementary school. Get one added there. And our post office downtown in Ashland. We'll add one there as well. Very good. All right, so I just want to take another quick peek back at what happened over here. We've got a Smoothie King, a Culver's. All right. We, 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 can't, we can't exist without a Culver's. And uh, just... Clean this up a bit. Doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to be pretty good. And whatever this is, a, a uh, shop and diner, and then a JFK taco cell. <laughs> so I think we're in a good spot here. This is certainly some ugly development, but it happens. And we're getting something else. A KFC next to the JFK. I'll, I'll allow it. And another Smoothie King. I might need to, uh, I might need to let it go a little bit. I've got Prop and Tree Anarchy on, so they're all having issues. And we don't have any water out here, so that that's something we need to take care of as well. There we go. So an advanced auto parts. Kind of a strange location for it, but it'll be fine. And for the first time in a while, our Torgerson's it's still okay. It's still existing. Although it looks low. I wonder. It is low. <laughs> so we fix it. It's still kind of weird. But uh, there we go. So I'm all over the place. And that to me means that it's probably getting time for me to call it on today's episode. We've got multiple KFCs. Oh, that now we've got a Carl's Jr. KFC, JFK. KFC. This is the chicken bend. I like it. Get your chicken. And uh, no employees, which is pretty standard right now for this type of restaurant in the world that we're currently living in. So here we go. Things are looking pretty barren, but I think they're going to improve with time. And I'm pleased with where we've ended today. We've... <laughs> That's how I know it's the end of the episode. Um, there's a fire. <laughs> of course there's a fire. But at least we have response units that can go and handle it. We should just make sure that we have 
Yeah, we've got coverage. We're in as we're in as good a spot as we're gonna be. I'm gonna end it here. <laughs> so, if you enjoy, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos and create new fires, hit the notification icon. I, I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They help me create this content by helping support me in the channel, and I appreciate them. And I appreciate you. Your likes, subscribes, and shares help grow the reach of the channel, and I appreciate that. I'm going to leave you with a brief city tour, and we're going to start that right now.